Okay, well, welcome back. Um, I recently did a couple of videos reviewing one of the uh, lower priced signal generators, and uh, it has some software capabilities to generate arbitrary waveforms that you can send out of the um, BNC connectors on one, of the, one or both of the two channels of the signal generator. And I thought I would um, discuss some other ways that you can generate waveforms that you can feed into your signal generator and have it output those for different voltage values and if you want to feed it into a circuit. There are some ways to do it that might not be too obvious, so I thought I would uh, discuss those. And you can probably do this with just about any waveform generator, signal generator. So what I have here is... Um, uh, for the signal generator, uh, the Coolertron that we reviewed before, the arbitrary uh, waveform tab, where you can generate an arbitrary waveform, and you can open and save a file to disk. It's a text file that defines um, 2,000, in this case, 2,048 uh, values for each point in the waveform, and this and it defines a single period of a periodic waveform. So basically it's very simple. It's a text file, it's got 2048 values, and any way you can generate the waveform and feed it into this, or generate a text file from it, uh, is easy. You just save it as a text file, and then you can open and bring it in here and send it out the uh, outputs of your signal generator. So what I'm going to talk about is some uh, kind of non-intuitive way that you might be able to do this. There are a number of ways you can do it. But I'm going to use a simple spreadsheet. And what we're going to do, I've got here a Excel spreadsheet. You can use OpenOffice, you can use any of the free spreadsheet software. But I'm using Excel. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to generate a waveform that includes three components. And you can see the result here is a sine wave that includes some harmonics, basically um, higher frequency components that convert it from a sine wave, in this case, into a more of a square wave. And the way I will do that is in this spreadsheet. And it's fairly simple. Um, as I mentioned, your, your definition of your waveform is just 2048 numbers. And what I've got here is in my spreadsheet, you can see I scroll down, I've got 2048 rows, and each row defines a time and a value, another time and another value, okay? So what I've got is a 2048 samples for this simple sine wave. And I've chosen a 60 hertz sine wave. And you can see I've got it up here. The frequency is 60 hertz, and I've got 2,000 samples. Or, or the total period of this is 1 over 60, or 16.67 milliseconds. And you can see it goes over here to 0 0.0167 milliseconds, which means each sample uh, corresponds to a little over 8 microseconds. Okay, so there's 2,048 values defining the sine wave. Each value is an increment of about 8 microseconds, okay? And you can see here, I'm starting, here's the time value starting at 0, 8 microseconds, or 16 microseconds, and 24 microseconds, and so on. And then here, I've got the value, the corresponding value. So in this case, I have set up a, an equation for, to define each point. And here's the equation, but basically, it's this over here, where the sine wave is defined by a magnitude times the sine of the frequency times the time plus a phase angle if anything exists, okay? So in this case, I've got a 60 hertz sine wave. Um, it's going to be whatever magnitude, and in this case, I'm choosing a magnitude of 1. So it's 1 times sine omega, which is 2 pi times 60. And it fills in the T for each point. And then if I have a, a phase angle, I can add it in here. Here I've got a zero phase angle. So the goal here is to be able to generate just about any waveform you want. In this case, I've got a simple sine wave. But depending on how complex your equation is for each point in the sine wave, you can make it very complex. 
And in this case, what I've done is I'm adding three components, three sine wave components of different frequencies, and I can also have different phase angles. All right. And what I want to do is have my primary, my 60 hertz, plus what's called a third harmonic, which is three times 60 or 180 hertz component, and then a fifth harmonic component, which is five times 60 or 300 hertz. So I can add those three components together in this spreadsheet and it will automatically update each value, all right? So basically the concept is you can make a spreadsheet and set it up with 2048 rows and then just start filling in um, the numbers and the times based on whatever you want to generate. So in this case, let's say now I want to add a uh, third harmonic or a 60 times 3 or 180 hertz component and I want its magnitude to be say 0.3. So I enter 0.3 and it automatically updates this sine wave and adds a uh, 180 hertz component with a magnitude of 0.3. And you can see that is pretty much what I've got in this um, for, for the waveform generator. Um, so basically what I can do is now that I've got that, I can just select this entire column, copy it, paste it into a text file, save it, and then just load it or open it here and it will take all those, just the values, and it will assign them to these 248 points. All right. So now I can do the same thing. I can add, say I want to add a fifth harmonic of 0.1 magnitude and it automatically does that. It makes more of a square wave, okay? And it updates all these values. So again, I can copy that. So let's say right click, copy. So I've copied, now I can um, open up a new text file, control V, paste and it pastes all those values into the file and then just save it and go in here and hit open and I can open it up and it will populate this um, screen. So depending on you know the, the um, equation I write to define this wave, I can make this as complex as I want. And really all I need is a text file with 2048 numbers that define the wave and I'm good. So now um, we've put in numbers, but we haven't told the waveform generator uh, in the signal, the signal generator, we haven't told it what frequency. We just say, here's 2048 points, but there's no time associated with it, okay? It's just reading in the points and, and applying them here. So what we have to do is we can write that to the waveform generator hardware and put it in whatever storage location. So if I write it, I click write, you can see it sends it into the waveform generator, go to the control panel, and it automatically updates um, what's being shown out of the, um, the uh, waveform generator and into the scope. Now what I've done is here, I have assigned this, these 2048 points, a frequency of 60 hertz. I can change that. I can say this is actually 600 hertz. And it will be, it will come out of the uh, waveform generator to 600 hertz, okay? So basically what you do is you build a single period of a periodic waveform, uh, assign it to 2048 points, bring it in here, and then you, you assign the actual frequency, the time values for this, you say one period is 60 hertz, okay? So again, you can use a spreadsheet, you can use MATLAB, you can use whatever you want, but at the end of the day, all it wants is a text file with 2048 points that define your waveform, and then once you bring it in here via this open, uh, you then define what frequency it represents, and you're all set. Okay, so now we've got our waveform sent out to the signal generator and it's measured on the scope and you can see the waveform on the top and the FFT on the bottom. And you can see the center frequency is 60 hertz and we've got a 180 hertz component, 
third harmonic and then a 300 hertz component on the FFT. And you can see the waveform is on the signal generator. It's, uh, there's a visual picture of the actual waveform, so uh, that all matches. So I hope this helps. Take care and have a really good day. Thanks.